Well, I want to welcome you to the power to change today. And I guarantee you by the end of this broadcast, you will never be the same again. Something supernatural, something very good is about to happen in your life. I want to ask you a question. Do you remember what it was like when Jesus touched your life for the first time? I know I do. When I got saved, I was in love with God. I was on fire for God. I'm sure you were as well. I was so grateful for what he had done in my life and the things that he had saved me from, not, not just from going to hell, but from my addictions and from the alcoholism. By the time I was 16 years old, I was considered clinically an alcoholic. I was depressed. I was, I was lonely. I was hateful. You know what I'm talking about, not just me. Some of you watching right now, you know your life was like that as well. You were saved from so much stuff like I was. We're all changed when Jesus touches us the first time, but too many of us settle right there. We're saved and we're delivered, but there's so much more for what God wants to do in your life or so much more of what God wants to do in your life, so much more for you when you experience what I like to call the second touch of Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about today. In the book of Mark, Jesus touched a blind man once and he could only partially see. But when Jesus touched him the second time, his sight was completely restored. And when you get saved, it's like that. You partially see. But when you get touched the second time, God causes you to see everything clearly and he brings restoration to your life. And gang, we all need restoration in some area of our life, don't we? Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you're in a very difficult financial situation. Maybe you need your finances restored. Maybe you need a relationship restored. Maybe you need your health restored. Some of us have lost our focus, our ambition, our dreams, our hope. Hope has been broken in many people's lives. Hopes have been dashed to the ground. It's time to get it all restored. Whatever you've lost is going to be restored beginning today. Whatever it is, this is your time. This is your hour. Watch this. Break out of the rut of your halfway life and tap into the fullness for living God has promised you. It's your time for restoration, for provision and abundance in your finances, to relight the spark in your marriage and to enjoy the energy and vitality of divine health. It's time to live life to the full. The second touch is coming if you'll stay in the Word, abide in the Word, and let the Word of God abide in you. In his powerful four CD audio series, Restore, Pastor Gregory Dickow will show you how you can recover the things which have been lost, broken, or damaged in your life. Learn how to put God's promises and principles to work and experience restoration in your family, your health, and your finances. And there's more. Pastor Dickow will also equip you with daily confessions to accelerate the restoration process in your life. Restore and the companion confession card are yours with your gift of $25 or more. But that's not all. Pastor Dickow will also include today's message in its entirety on DVD. This message is yours completely free with this special teaching offer. That's Restore and the Restoration Confession Card for a gift of $25 or more. Plus, today's complete message on DVD absolutely free. Move beyond a halfway life and discover life to the full when you call now. Well, let's take a look at the book of Mark, chapter 8, beginning in verse 22. And it says, And they came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. And taking the blind man by the hand, it says he brought him out of the village and after spitting in his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And verse 24 says he looked up and said, I see men, but I see them like trees walking around. Then again, he laid his hands on his eyes and he looked intently and was restored and began to see everything clearly. Now, every one of us needs to see that Jesus touched this man a second time and every one of us needs a second touch from God. This is the only place in the New Testament where Jesus touched somebody a second time. So it's very significant. And it's the only place in the Bible where it doesn't seem to have been an instantaneous miracle. 
Why is that? What is God trying to show us here? Well, he's showing us if you believe that God will provide you with something and it hasn't happened yet, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. It ain't over yet. Don't feel like God has left you because he didn't leave, because he certainly didn't leave this man after praying for him the first time. He didn't walk away from this man after laying hands on him the first time. The Bible says that this man initially saw men like trees walking. Shouldn't Jesus have said, well, that's better than you started with and you ought to be happy with that. No, Jesus didn't say that. He laid his hands on him a second time. And if you look at what your Bible says, you'll see what happened. The Bible says he was restored completely. He was put back into his original working condition. That's what the word restore means. To restore means God is literally putting us back into the original condition for which he created us. This is such an amazing concept we need to realize. God says he restored this man. He restored his sight. But it didn't happen with the first touch. It happened with the second touch. And that tells me something. It tells me God is a God of progressive blessing. Don't be discouraged wherever you're at. Your blessing is progressing. It's progressive revelation, a progressive inheritance, a progressive healing, a progressive experience. Uh, this is progressive and it's okay to believe that. Do you know, there's a place in Scripture, in Proverbs, and it says, an inheritance gained in haste will not be blessed in the end. An inheritance gained quickly will not be blessed in the end. When you get everything at once, it's not going to be blessed at the end. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to, God doesn't want to give you everything at once, but God wants you to experience the progression. Don't be discouraged if you got saved, but you haven't overcome your addiction to nicotine yet or even alcohol, or whatever it might be going on in your life. Maybe you got saved and you haven't gotten your finances together yet. You got saved, but your family hasn't recovered yet. You got saved, but you're still dealing with sickness. Don't worry. If you got saved, that's the first touch. But the truth is, the second touch is coming. If you'll let God change you and let, let Him change the way you think, the second touch is coming. If you'll stay in the word, abide in the word, and let the word of God abide in you. The second touch is coming, and it's going to restore your body. The second touch is coming, and it's going to restore your health. The second touch is coming, and it's going to restore your relationships. It's going to restore you to the original position, like the way Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. Do you remember? They had a divine connection with God. They had divine authority over their problems, over demons, over the animals, over the forces of the earth. They had divine provision. They had all the trees in the garden. They had the gold in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers flowing through the garden. They had the best of everything. And God is saying to restore means to put us back where we're experiencing the best of everything. Not because we have, we have to have it, but because God paid the price for us to have it. Jesus paid the price. I think that the greatest offense against God is when he says, here, I paid for all of this. And we say, oh, but I don't need all of that. And he says, I paid for your salvation. And you say, I'll take that. And he said, I paid for your healing. And you say, ah, I'm not sure. I paid for you to have a heavenly language. Oh, I'm not sure. I paid for you to be blessed in all areas of your life and to have an inheritance. Well, I don't need that. I, I'm just grateful that I'm saved. Well, it's good that you're grateful that you're saved. And I want you to realize this, though, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for more than just your salvation. He, he paid for more than just the green beans in the grocery bag. He paid for all the groceries. And not to minimize salvation in any way, but I want you to see the bigger picture. Jesus' blood was shed so that you could not only be saved, but restored completely. He gave us his word so you could be restored, put back in your original condition. Do you need your marriage to be put back in the right condition? Do you need your children to be put back in the right condition? Do you need your finances to be put back in the right condition? Jesus paid for you to experience that and for you to walk in full, complete restoration. Well, now what I want to do is I want to break this passage of scripture down a little bit. So 
Let's break it down a little bit more and look in verse 23. And it says, he took the blind man, and, and I want to show you the process of how this works in your life. Jesus took the blind man by the hand. Let's stop there for a second. He took the blind man by the hand. The blind man had to follow. The blind man had to trust. If you want to see total restoration, you got to trust. The blind man had to know that Jesus wasn't going to take him somewhere he didn't want to go, that Jesus wasn't going to take him somewhere down a dangerous path, that Jesus knew what he was doing. You might say, oh God, I, I don't want to be saved because, or I don't want to serve you because maybe you'll send me to Africa to be a missionary, or you might make me marry somebody that I can't stand. Or, You know, that's what my wife said before we got married, but God, God touched her a second time. <laughs> I <laughs> touched, touched her a second time, touched me a second time. Listen, God is not going to make you do anything that doesn't bless you. God is smart. He knows what's best for you. And he wants the greatest blessing in your life. Now, listen, we've got to have trust. Jesus took him by the hand and said, follow me. Trust me. Isn't it true that sometimes God is going to take us into places we're unfamiliar with? He's going to take us to do something we're not used to doing. He's going to tell us things we're not used to hearing. And we have to be willing to trust. This is the key to total, complete restoration. Trust is saying, Jesus, wherever you lead me, I'll follow. Whatever you feed me, I'll swallow. Whatever you command, I'll do it and I'll love it. You have to come to a place where you let him take you by the hand. Trust in the Lord and all will be well with you. And, the and I want you to notice this, Jesus, the next thing it says in this verse, Jesus led him out of the village. He led him out of the town. Now, why do you think Jesus, after taking him by the hand, he took him out of the town? Well, it's pretty simple, and I want to explain it to you. The blind man had developed a keen awareness of his other senses. He couldn't see, but he knew familiar smells, familiar sounds, familiar feelings. He felt everything. He smelled everything. He heard everything. And though he may not have had vision, he had grown accustomed and he had grown familiar to the way things were. And in order for Jesus to unsettle his situation so that he could be healed, and in order for Jesus to restore him completely, he had to lead him away from what was familiar to him. If you want to see God restore everything in your life, you have to let him lead you by the hand and take you to an unfamiliar place, meaning out of your uh, upbringing, out of what you're comfortable with, out of your comfort zone. You have to trust Him, and then you got to separate yourself. you got to be willing to let Him separate you from the old familiar ways of thinking, your old familiar mindsets that have limited you, and old familiar people who may have liked you being blind, people who, have o who only ever saw you as the blind man. Jesus wants to get this man out so that no one else's perception, no one else's opinion of him will keep him in bondage. No one else's viewpoint of him will keep, would keep him in that condition, caged by those external expectations. Oh, he's blind. He'll never see again, most of the people probably thought. No, Jesus wants to get you out where the voices, the smells, the sounds of everything else going on around you are no longer holding you captive. Jesus wants to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you so that the only thing influencing you is His voice, His touch, His heart. He wants to detach you from those things that are holding you back, and He wants you to hear His voice. Beloved, we need some alone time with Jesus if we want to see these things restored in our lives. We've got to let Him lead us out of our comfort level, out of what we've grown accustomed to, out of the fact that, well, I'm used to having this sickness or I'm used to uh, feeling this way. I'm used to being in debt. I'm used to being depressed. I'm used to being broke. I'm used to being sick. I'm used to being discouraged. I'm used to not having any friends. No, Jesus takes us out of that old village that we grew accustomed to so that he could restore us completely. But what happened before Jesus took the blind man out of the village? What else would you expect? He spit in his eyes. And I know you're thinking, what in the world does that mean? What possible reason would Jesus have to spit in this man's eyes? To spit in his eyes, I believe, was Jesus telling him, I want to take what's in me. I want to take my life, my my." 
fluid, my flavor, my anointing, my power, my, you know, what I taste and what I, what I believe, my words, and I want to give them to you. This is what I believe Jesus is trying to teach us through spitting in this man's eyes. But I also think he's trying to teach us another lesson when he spits in his eyes. And that lesson is you're going to have to overcome being insulted and offended at times if you want to see God's restoration happen in your life. I mean, to spit at someone is an insult, isn't it? To spit in their general direction is kind of an insult. But to spit in their eyes, now that's absurd. That's the worst. But gang, you've got to realize the word of God will sometimes insult you. It will offend your flesh. It'll offend your pride. It will offend your fear. It will offend your anxiety. It will offend what you've grown accustomed to. But you don't want to stay right where you're at. You don't want to live in that defeat and in that blindness the rest of your life. You want to see restored. You don't just want to partially see. You don't just want to partially be blessed. You want all the blessing of God, right? Jesus spit in that man's eyes and then he put his hands on him and asked him what he saw. And the man looked up and he said, I see men like trees walking. You see, he had to be honest. And you want all things to be restored in your life, right? Don't you want all things to be restored in your life? Well, you've got to be honest. You've got to admit, hey, I am struggling with financial problems, or I am struggling with fear, or I am struggling with pride. We've got to stop putting on our Sunday best on the outside, yet on the inside, we're pretending that we don't really need help. We're pretending that we didn't really sin. We're pretending that we don't really need God's grace supernaturally in our lives. This man was, was willing to admit the truth about what he saw. I mean, imagine standing before the Son of God who just laid his hands on you. He laid his hands on others and they were perfectly healed. And now he laid his hands on you and you're not totally healed. You might feel embarrassed. You might feel tempted to lie about it. But Jesus said, what do you see? Do you see anything? And you're tempted to say, oh, yes, Lord, everything's okay. That's good enough for me, Lord, because you don't want to insult the Savior. Sometimes we don't want to be honest with God because we don't want God to hear us complain or we don't want God to think bad of us. Listen, he's never going to think bad of you. Tell him the truth. He already knows it anyway. Be honest with God. This is how we're going to see this total restoration. He knows everything about you already, but he wants you to choose to share honestly with him. Pour your heart out to God. He understands. Don't you think Jesus understood? But he wants to show us this lesson, beloved. We got to realize in order to see all things restored, we have to be willing to be honest and not live in denial. If you're dealing with some sort of addiction or alcohol or even drugs or you're dealing with some sexual sin, whatever it is, don't pretend it's not there. That's not going to make it go away. Admitting it and saying, Jesus, touch me again. That's what's going to change your life and restore you. Admitting it and saying, Lord, I know I'm saved, but I need a second touch. I need my mind renewed. I need healing. These are the things that will change you from the inside out. Now, don't be discouraged if you've only made a little progress. The blind man, when he first saw, he saw men like trees walking. Sometimes we're saved, but we're not walking in the fullness of God. We don't see the whole picture. We don't see God's whole purpose showing up in our lives. We don't see things clearly. We're not living clearly. But don't give up on yourself because God didn't give up on you. And by the way, Jesus didn't tell the blind man, well, I'm done. He would have laid his hands on him a third time if he needed to and a fourth time if he needed to and a fifth time. Don't give up. Don't say, well, that's enough for me because one of the most important things about Jesus is he didn't settle when the blind man said, the most important thing you need to understand about Jesus, Jesus wasn't satisfied with this blind man just seeing men like trees walking. Jesus said, let me lay hands on you again. I'm not finished with you. I'm not settling for less than what I have intended for your life. I'm not going to leave you in that condition. I'm not going to, yes, I'm glad you're saved, but I didn't die just for your salvation. I want your family restored. I want your health restored. I want your body restored. I want your marriage restored. I want your finances restored. That's how God operates. Remember, remember the other blind man? People came up and asked him, who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it this man or his parents? And Jesus said, neither. In other words, we're not looking for blame. We're looking for solutions. 
He said, let me clean up this mess. Forget about how he got in that condition. It's not his sin. It's not his parents' sin. Stop trying to condemn him. That's what Jesus was saying. Stop trying to define him. Stop trying to limit him. When I see a blind man, I see someone who will one day see. When I see a lame man, I see someone who will one day run. When I see a widow who's broken and poor, I see a woman whose life is going to be full and blessed because she's trusting me and she's letting me separate her from what's familiar. That's what Jesus was saying. She's taking time with me and she's willing to let me spit in her eye, even though it's unconventional, even though it's untraditional, even though it's unreligious. She's willing to lift her hands or she's willing to sow a seed. She's willing to give her last two coins. She's willing to give an offering. She's willing to speak in a heavenly language she, because she loves Jesus and she'll follow him wherever he leads her. And that's why she's going to see restoration. That's why I'm talking about you that are watching right now. That's why you're going to see restoration. Jesus doesn't see you defined and confined by your current condition. He sees change a coming. He sees restoration coming. And so Jesus laid his hands on the blind man a second time. This tells me several things. A second touch means a second chance. It tells me God is not through with me yet. And he's not through with you yet. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to, he's going to stay with me in this thing. I might stumble, but he'll pick me up. He'll walk with me through it until I come out on the other side victorious. The second touch means you haven't failed just because it hasn't materialized yet. The second touch means a second chance. How many people do I know who said, I prayed and I didn't get healed, so it must not work. Well, I, keep, well, I say keep believing, keep asking, keep knocking on that door. And Jesus said it'll be open to you. It's progressive. First, you start out crawling as a baby. Then you start out walking. Then you're running then you're winning, then you're bringing others with you. It's progressive. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you simply have to trust. Spend alone time with God. Separate yourself from the sense of the, of the sounds and the, and the voices and the familiar life that you lived, surrounded, and, and surround yourself with with Jesus' smell, with Jesus' touch, with Jesus' words. And let him spit in your eye. <laughs> let, him, let him say the difficult things to you. Be willing to admit the truth. Beloved, it's time for you to experience a second touch from Jesus. Remember, the first touch is salvation, and the second touch is restoration. I want to say it again. The first touch of Jesus is salvation, but the second touch, which is what I'm talking about today, is restoration. Everything is going to be restored in your life when you receive the second touch. Oh, I could talk all day about this. We just don't have enough time. But perhaps you're watching right now and you say, I need that second touch. I need God to restore in my life joy or peace or a relationship or my health or my finances. Well, I want to help you today build your faith in this area and get more understanding and I want to put in your hands what, it, what, what is necessary to bring that second touch. What I found from God's word about the second touch of Jesus and how it restores everything, I want to put it in your hands. I want you to call me. I'm going to teach you some amazing revelation from God's word on how you can restore the things that have been lost, broken, or damaged in your life. The devil has stolen finances, loved ones, health, and it's time to take them back. God's promise and principles of restoration are throughout His Word. And this teaching series, I simply call it Restore. It'll teach you how to apply these truths from God's Word and recover and restore all that has been lost, receiving the second touch of Jesus. I'll also send you a special uh, insert with promises from God's Word. And I also want to send you a DVD of today's teaching in its entirety. When I taught this in my church in its entirety, I want to put it in your hands. My announcer is going to tell you more about how you can get today's offer and watch this and I'll be right back to pray for you. In his powerful four CD audio series, Restore, Pastor Gregory Dickow will show you how you can recover the things which have been lost, broken or damaged in your life. Learn how to put God's promises and principles to work and experience restoration in your family, your health, and your finances. And there's more. Pastor Dickow will also equip you with daily confessions to accelerate the restoration process in your life. 
Restore, and the Companion Confession Card are yours with your gift of $25 or more. But that's not all. Pastor Dickow will also include today's message in its entirety on DVD. This message is yours completely free with this special teaching offer. That's Restore and the Restoration Confession Card for a gift of $25 or more. Plus, today's complete message on DVD absolutely free. Move beyond a halfway life and discover life to the full when you call now. Now let me pray for you. Father, thank you that you love every person watching this broadcast right now. You want to touch them. Lord, I pray that you would give them hope. Lord, I pray that the second touch of Jesus would stir them up. They would desire the second touch of renewing their mind, the second touch of receiving your word, the second touch of seeing all things restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Now remember, folks, the second touch of Jesus is what brings restoration. Believe it, expect it, and don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then. God bless. If you are ever in the Chicagoland area, we want to invite you to join us for a powerful church service at one of our campuses. Our beautiful Northwest Suburb campus is conveniently located on the northwest corner of I-90 and Beverly Road in Hoffman Estates. Or join us at our downtown Chicago campus located at Whitney Young High School on the corner of Jackson and Loomis. For service times or more information, visit LifeChangersChurch.com. Do you have a question for Gregory Dickow? You can ask the pastor. Well, I want to talk to you personally. I want to answer your most difficult questions, your most challenging questions. That's why I have a radio show called Ask the Pastor. You can go to my website and find out more. You can find the phone number where you can call me directly Monday through Friday. I want to talk to you personally. I want to be your friend. I want to be your mentor. I want to answer the questions that you have in life. Visit askthepastor.net for more information or to listen live online. It is Gregory Dickow's passion to bring the life-changing message of God's love, God's grace, and God's power to this generation and the generations to come. If you would like to invite Gregory Dickow to minister at your church or upcoming conference or seminar, please call 888-849-5433 or visit our website. Are you ready to experience a change in your life? Then visit www.gregorydickow.org today. With easy navigation, you can watch previous episodes of the Power to Change Today show. Sign up to receive Gregory Dickow's podcasts. Be encouraged by powerful articles. View testimonies. Keep informed how you are helping to change other people's lives and so much more. Visit gregorydickow.org and experience a change in your life today.